Hey guys, welcome back to another edition of MacBreak Studio. I'm out here on location shooting with my iPhone and Filmic Pro. And today I want to talk to you about camera to cloud, otherwise known as C2C, which means that you could shoot with your phone in the field, have it create proxy media, upload to Frame.io, and then download that media to your editor anywhere in the world. It's pretty amazing and I want to show you the workflow. Before we look at how to configure Filmic Pro, let me quickly give you the rundown on what you'll need. You'll need an iPhone 11 or later with the latest version of Filmic Pro installed. You'll also need the Cinematographer's Kit, which is an in-app purchase for $13.99. The cloud service you'll be uploading to is Frame.io. You'll need a Pro account, which is $15 a month and includes 500 gigabytes of storage. FYI, you can try Frame.io for free for an entire month before committing to the monthly subscription. Assuming your hardware and software is copacetic, launch the Frame.io app on your phone, or log in using a web browser on your desktop. You'll need to create a project, which I'm doing here, then give your project a name. I'll call this one Music Video. Enable cloud device integration so your device knows what project to upload the media to. Next, tap Create, and your project is ready to start receiving media. In Filmic Pro, tap the gear icon, then tap Frame.io. Currently, I'm already logged into Frame.io, as indicated by the large blue button at the top, but I want to walk you through the process as if you're logging in for the first time. Tapping the button will allow you to change accounts, change the current project, and log out. I'll tap Log Out, then tap it again to log back in. Filmic Pro lets you know that any videos you upload will be saved without a timecode track. Furthermore, the movies you record must be saved in Filmic Pro's internal library, instead of your camera roll, if that's how you have Filmic Pro set up. And from there, Filmic Pro wants to handshake with Frame.io, in which case you're taken to Frame.io's login page where you enter your credentials and tap Allow. The account you logged into appears in a window. Select your account, then select the project you chose for C2C uploading in Frame.io. The next step is to choose a proxy quality. 720p produces the smallest size proxies at 1.5 megabits per second. If you have 4G connectivity or a limited data plan, this is the best option. 1080p LQ encodes proxies at 3 megabits per second, and 1080p HQ gives you the highest quality proxies at 10 megabits per second. I'm going to choose the 720p option because there are no 5G towers near me. Under Upload Method, there are three options, Auto, Prompt, and Off. Prompt is the default setting. Whenever you stop recording, Filmic Pro asks you if you want to downsample and upload the clip. Choosing automatic, this process happens without you being prompted, and by choosing off, Filmic Pro does not downconvert or upload any clips until you do this manually from within the Filmic library. I'll select Prompt. Finally, by choosing Cell Data Usage, you're telling Filmic Pro to use your data plan for uploading. With it off, Filmic Pro won't upload it until your phone is connected to Wi-Fi. In terms of how I like to shoot with Filmic, I prefer shooting in 4K in ProRes, with a frame rate of 24. I also shoot using the Log Profile, and make sure I'm protecting my highlights and shadows. I'll record a few seconds of Curtis, then terminate the recording. Because I had prompt chosen, Filmic Pro asks me if I want to downsample the clip and upload it. I'll tap yes, and the downsampling begins. When finished, the clip begins uploading. I also get a flag letting me know that the upload has completed. Once you're finished shooting, tap the play button to view all the clips in the Filmic Pro library. The proxy clips appear in purple, and the 4K clips appear directly below. Here you can see that the clip names and the durations are identical. From here, I can scroll through my entire library to view all my original and proxy media. Great! Let's head on over to Final Cut Pro to see how you can access and edit this proxy media from any edit bay in the world. If you've downloaded the free Frame.io workflow extension for Final Cut Pro, you can access your projects using this button in the upper toolbar. However, even though this is the most convenient way to access your proxies, I don't recommend using it as there are some major issues related to relinking your media later on. So I'm going to recommend another workflow that I've tested, and it's bulletproof. The first thing you need to do is select the library and set the media location to an external folder. This is my preferred library configuration when collaborating over the internet, as it keeps the library small so it can be easily sent to others. From the media pop-up, select Choose. Create a folder and name it Proxies. 
Next, press Command Comma to open the Preferences window, and from the Import panel, choose Leave Files in Place. Then close Preferences. Launch your web browser and go to this link, frame.io forward slash transfer. On this page, you'll find an app that will allow you to batch download or upload your files from Frame.io that is way faster and far more efficient than using a web browser. Also, the app is free. Launch the app and log into your account. Locate the Camera to Cloud project you created in your iOS app on your desktop. Here's the music video project I created on location. You'll need to drill down several folders deep in order to get to your proxy media. Select all your proxy media, then click the Download button. Choose Original, then select the Proxies folder you created in the Library Inspector in Final Cut Pro. Because the files are small, they download super fast. Locate the proxy files in your system, then drag them over the event to import them. I also moved the frame size metadata column to a prominent location in my browser so I can confirm that I'm working with 720p proxy media in the event. Next, I'll begin editing with the proxies. I'll create selection ranges and favorites for these three clips at the top of the list. I'll then filter my clips by favorites, select them, and create a new project. Now here's a really important step. The format you choose here should match your final delivery resolution, not the proxy resolution. So in this case, I want to choose 4K with a resolution of 3840 by 2160. I'll name the project and press return. I'll make some basic edits to these clips by adding a transition and a speed ramp effect. So there's my edit. Now I'm ready to reconnect to the high resolution 4K media, which by the way, I airdropped to my iMac Pro from Filmic Pro on my iPhone. I'll select the proxy source clips in my event, then choose File, Relink Files, Original Media. In the Relink window, choose Locate All, then direct the search to my 4K ProRes source files. Because of the matching file names, clip durations, and record run time code, the clips in the timeline are swapped out with the high resolution ProRes versions. Also notice that the frame size column now reports matching resolution for these clips. If I set the filtering to all clips, I can see which clips have been swapped out and which ones are still in proxy format. So what do you guys think? Would you use camera to cloud workflow? Let us know in the comments and we'll see you next time.